Yo, bet. Bet, thank you. Thank you, guys. I owe you one. Hit me up. This is the card, this is the track, and this is Shaq on the ground at a game trying to get up. Taking a charge? Have you ever seen that? Week 13 is upon us. The Porsche Cup is at Alton Park. We're starting in P4 as car number three. This is not a track you typically see this car on. This is typically a track for Miatas, but here we are on Alton. I absolutely love this track. I spent a lot of time on this track in Miatas, and let's get underway. Starting off P4, we are going to maintain our position, and I think uh, our terrible launches are a thing of the past as they updated the tires upon race start for the Porsche Cup, so it's basically always primed for a launch. Moving up the inside, which turns to the outside for this downhill left-hander of car number four battling for the podium, going to basically lose that uh, opportunity, settle behind him, and car number five now almost looks up the inside as the offensive line that I initially took to challenge P3 kind of ended up making me lose a good bit of time, about half of a second behind P3 as we come through the carousel. And uh, this track is one of my favorite tracks, mostly because of this next corner we're approaching. Super tight chicane, uh, can be very dangerous if you're in heavy traffic, which this is week 13. So on top of the fact that there is heavy traffic, as there are 30 cars in this lobby, there's also a bunch of people who probably don't drive this car very often. And taking a look back at some of the other people who made their way through the chicane, this guy cutting the corner, that guy cutting the corner, uh, this guy just a few moments earlier as he comes through the carousel, ends up going too wide with this guy. You don't want to go too wide through this chicane, but he's going to make sure that doesn't happen. Pit maneuver him before they even get to it, so he'll get through safely. These guys do go too wide through the chicane, manage to survive, make a contact on the way out, but nobody really dies there. Car number 20, who just pit maneuvered that guy into that chicane, is going to make a dive from about 100 meters back, uh, flying up the inside, not making that corner, continues to try to make it, running straight into the tire barrier. Uh, car number 23 here then spins off through the second chicane, which really nobody's fault but his own there there was nobody forcing him to do anything there this guy is driving through the grass there's another guy cutting the corner it's week 13 this is kind of just how it is fortunately though we were at the front of this group so when we went through that second chicane i mean there's what three people ahead of us we've got half of a second in either direction and uh, we're able to make it through there just fine so turn one was pretty calm for us i didn't even realize all of the chaos that was ensuing behind me I was just trying to do my best to keep with these guys at the front as all of their qualifying time, they were about half of a second faster than me, so I was expected to drop off of them, but I wanted to stay as close as I could. Coming into the final corner, really, really deceivingly tricky corner. If you drive Miatas, you probably have some terrible memories at this corner. It's like the first corner you run into where there's like a big crest and the car goes light. Uh, for me, at least, this was the first corner that I ever encountered like this. Car number 16 displaying exactly how easy it is to lose the car through there. If you have the car turned at all as the car kind of settles back down after you go over that crest, it will spin around on you so quickly. Looks like they're about to go too wide up ahead of us into the downhill left-hander on lap two. I get caught watching and just completely send myself wide there, losing two positions to the two gravity, gravity racing cars. That's Alex and Raphael on the same racing team, although wearing like dinner different generations of the gravity racing livery i don't know who gravity racing is i just saw it on their cars but we are about to learn who they are and i will say that they are very kind people more on that i think at the end of this lap or maybe the start of the next lap we are currently about 1.3 seconds behind uh rafael heading into the chicane going to gain a little bit of time through there about 0.2 seconds which was nice that chicane doesn't define the lap or anything, but I do pride myself on absolutely shipping it through that chicane. Even though I wasn't the fastest one in this lobby through that chicane, it's still, it's just a very, very fun corner or couple of corners to string together at full pace. Now we find ourselves under a second behind Raphael, so we are making the time up to him. Mandela Pluck still, he's kept about a 0.6 second gap ever since we rejoined the track going off at that uh, long left-hander earlier in this lap. Approaching the final corner, always, always have to be cautious here, no matter how much like time you put into this track. If you're on like a flying, flying lap and you're not kind of conscious of that corner, it can, it can kill you. Lap number three, and both of the gravity cars ahead just decide that they no longer want to maintain those positions or grip at all. One of them slides off to the right, the other one overcorrects to the left, and goodbye to both of them. We go on through there. 
now back into our position of P4, where we started. We are pretty substantially behind Hayden, 2.6 seconds on lap three, which is not the kind of gap you want to see this early on. And Mandela behind us is not going anywhere, still 0.6 seconds. And Hayden decides to make this interesting, driving off of the track and rejoining, losing about a second there, slightly over a second even. And this is kind of my chance now to try and continue to close this gap, get into his head the idea that, you know, maybe I'm faster and maybe that eats away at him over the course of this race through the chicane. And we actually do gain a little bit of time there. So I'm feeling good at this point uh, coming into this next chicane and he's going to start to get back into the rhythm of things. 1.4 seconds as we enter the chicane. 1.7 as we come out and it kind of teeters around there but really he did gain a couple of tenths through there i think i was over slowing the car quite a bit through that chicane fast forwarding to lap number four and we are going to turn our attention not towards p3 but p2 this is i think his name is victor and he's like a seven or six k or five k i don't know he's a very highly rated driver but through that final corner like i said it will kill everybody and boom there you go just leaving the wheel slightly too much to the right as the car settles down and the suspension compresses backing across the track as we come through uh realizes in time thank god and we're able to survive so we are now up into p3 by the time lap number five comes around hayden pulling away a little bit and Mandela still pretty close to us about a second behind but it's going to change coming through the chicane and he just does not get the car stopped in time that will open up quite a gap for us and relieve any pressure which I mean honestly I kind of forgotten that he was back there I felt confident in my pace but I was one mistake away from losing that position however now he is four seconds behind so I'm probably two or three mistakes depending on the gravity of the mistake uh, from losing that position lap number seven it's still chasing Hayden down we've managed to keep him around that same gap I think our pace has evened out we're both running low 36s high 35s which I think we could even go faster or me specifically I think I could go faster I didn't have a ton of practice kind of just hopped straight into week 13 sadly I missed out on quite a bit of week 13 taking a look at the relative as we come out of that chicane and we actually end up gaining about a full second there so something must have happened to Hayden through there we're now find ourselves less than a second and a half heading through the second chicane he seems to be faster on most occasions through here however we do have the momentum currently of I mean we just gained a second to him through those last couple of corners and sometimes that builds confidence and a doubt in the head of yourself and your opponents respectively lap number nine so the penultimate lap Coming through that long left-hander that leads onto the straight, we've got about 1.2 seconds to Hayden, which is good. I would say I'm kind of like rimming slipstream at this point, so just barely picking it up. And it doesn't seem to be doing much, but I, I promise it's probably doing something. Hayden, once again, same spot, goes wide, and that is going to close up the gap substantially. About a second gain there for us through the carousel 0.4 seconds the slipstream should be pretty heavy at this point i gotta be slightly cautious coming through the chicane now there is some dirty dirty air that i'm going through there and uh maintaining about 0.4 seconds behind him absolutely perfect we've got one more lap to get this done honestly it's a pretty hard um track to overtake on if you are on similar pace to somebody you're really relying on a mistake you can of course force an error or force yourself into a situation but you still have to be just about as fast if not faster than somebody in order to catch them at all here however we seem to be on the right track half a second to them and uh looking back on it perhaps i should have been just even faking like a dive here or there a bit more often i didn't i didn't really it, it didn't cross my mind for whatever reason i had been seeing him make some mistakes over the past few laps and i was hoping that that trend would continue 0.6 seconds you know one more mistake from him and that should be the position for me crossing onto the final lap and watching this back i regret not trying to force a mistake i mean like I said, he's been making mistakes, but, uh, you know, I can't rely on somebody to make a mistake to get a position. I should have been pushing. I, I eventually, on the last corner, just do a little tiny baby tease there, and he actually goes super deep, loses a ton of speed, and it makes me think now that had I been doing that on a few other corners, I probably could have forced an error earlier or, uh just opened up an opportunity for myself doesn't happen though and we end up crossing the line in p3 lesson learned i guess i just need to be more aggressive i seem to have lost that dog in me that just constantly wants to fight now skipping back to lap number two i know i showed a lot of carnage already but there was much more i don't even think 
I was able to get all of the carnage recorded because there was just too much. But here's some of it. Car number 18, catching up to car number 6, looking up the inside for the chicane. Very difficult to go too wide through here, and it's not going to end well for this guy. He gets absolutely bunced into the barrier, rejoins the track in front of this guy, who props to car number 23, had literally no reaction to that, did not get on the mic, did not get on text chat. Uh, car number 18 then goes on to spin out half of a corner later after cutting the chicane, and then he ends up quitting, overcome with shame. Lap number five. This is middle of the pack. Car number 14 finds his way side by side with this Martini guy, heading towards that first chicane, super tight chicane. Very, very difficult to uh, go too wide through here. Not even gonna make it that far as the very slight contact on entry sent him around into the barrier. Car number 25 tailed by car number 22 moments later through the same chicane. 25 begins to spin, two helps him out and sends him all of the way around. And look at this. 25 just about deciding to rejoin before changing his mind and just giving out free off tracks for almost the entirety of the grid. It's like seven or eight people there all picking up off tracks. Lap number eight and car number six who got into that incident earlier with I think it was car number 18 now looking for an almighty dive on the Tic Tac polka dot car runs into the back of him and gets spun around on the carousel. Luckily, he's able to rejoin, and 22 is pretty patient here to give him space and time, actually getting on the brakes and letting six pull away. So some sort of tragedy avoided there. Here are the results for that one. Our race was actually fairly clean, uh, really clean, actually. I think we had only a few off tracks, and that was basically all of our incidents. Green, both in the I rating and safety rating department. Uh, there's a client update, don't mind that. Let's get into the next race. So back at Alton Park, this time as car number four starting in p2 with a 35.3 still six tenths behind julian who won the last race joey has decided to join us this race with about zero practice and he has qualified on p6 lap number one i'm just hoping to separate myself from the rest of the grid here follow behind the leader and potentially avoid an accident that would be fantastic look at this launch it's so good the launches are so much easier in this car now it's amazing my life is going to be so much easier uh this season joey staying in p6 as they make it around the first few corners and uh we maintain our position in p2 it seems like everybody is kind of maintaining their positions much easier there's a lot less wheel spin and differentiation between people's races. However, we are by no means out of or in the clear as everybody is about three tenths behind each other here. So super tight grid right now, but that's going to be separated a little bit here as Luis Miranda looking up the inside on lap one of the gravity car ends up making contact with him. Joey makes contact with Luis and kind of pushes him through and the gravity car now kind of gets caught on the outside there. Joey very smart here to back out and basically ensure that everybody survives there. Could have been worse. That does open up a pretty big gap behind P3 to P4, so we still have the pressure of P3, but relieving that pressure of P4 is pretty major for me, as I don't know if you remember Luis, but he's murdered us a lot. Joey has decided to uh, just completely cut the chicane. Definitely has a slowdown from that, and the way he's going to serve it is <laughs> a bit questionable. Driving off the track, rejoining safely, though, so, I mean, really affecting nobody but himself, which is great for everybody else. Uh, ends up losing another position still to the Red Bull racing car, or is he? They're going to go side by side through the long right hander towards the back of the track, and Joey actually manages to make it work around the outside, so props to him. As we cross on to lap number two, the top three, we've kind of pulled away quite a big gap behind to the gravity car who is now sitting in P4. And already we have lost about a second to Julin ahead. I was not expecting myself to be able to keep up with him in any nature. I just really wanted to try and stay away from Victor. That didn't seem to be working out too well for me. A little bit of oversteer there as we come out of that corner. And uh, that paired with the amount of slipstream that Victor has being 0.1 seconds behind us heading towards the carousel, I figured would open up an opportunity here. And I'm actually just going to drive wide and let him have this position. I know that he's fast. I've driven with him before. He spun out in the last race, but had he not done that, he probably would have finished P2. So I decided, you know what? I can try and follow him, take his slipstream and possibly get a move done later. I had no pressure from behind about two seconds, so I felt safe to just kind of cruise with this guy and I trusted his pace. Now, skipping back to lap number one, and I just wanna, like, I feel like this kind of highlights what week 13 is. Car number 24, starting last on the grid, just decides not to start at all. I, gets on the throttle literally five, six seconds 
after the light goes green. Car number eight up ahead of them into the first turn, runs into somebody, runs into somebody else, sends this guy off to the side. This guy seems like he just stops driving, lets go of the wheel or something. So 24 actually picks up a position from there. There's somebody who decided to start in the pits uh, and he's going to be following him through. As they go through, I think that's the third corner there, two people off on the side. We'll take a look back to see how they got there. Car number 14, super ambitious move there. Kind of got what he deserved. Car number 8 and 19 have a little come together on the exit of that corner, and 19 really pays the ultimate price there. Lap number 2 and car number 24, he's like moved up to P16 or something at this point. Somebody's just driving off to the side there. Another guy just spins out, so he's up to, I don't know, P... I, I want to say he's around P... P12 at this point, moving up the inside of this guy, too wide through the chicane, doesn't make it work, but props for trying, and I mean, that was about as clean of an attempt as you'll see right there. However, he's not quite going to give up, gets a really good run as opposed to car number nine, heading towards the long right-hander, towards the back of the track, finds space on the outside, which is actually the inside for this corner, and car number nine going to back out, give it to him, could possibly make it work around the outside, but is going to settle behind. And props to 24. What a race start. Uh, first couple of laps for him. Lap number three, so back to present time. And Luis Miranda, who's in P5 at the moment, spinning out. 21 correcting him. Thank you for that. Honestly saved his life right there. Car number 12 looking to go around the inside, but uh, Luis moves over to defend that as they head on to lap four. Trying to go around the outside is car number 12, but he's going to settle behind. Smart move, unless you're pretty far ahead. Going around the outside is a bit of a death sentence there. Joey behind has kind of caught all of these cars up. Still fighting back from his cutting of the chicane on lap one. He now finds himself fighting for P6, which is currently held by car number six. So that's that pink car up ahead. And he's going to make, con I mean, this guy makes contact with him, just running into the back of him. Potentially looking for a move up the inside, not quite, but just showing his car there. So car number six, trying to defend P6. He's got uh, three cars queued up right behind him and through the chicane, it's gonna unfold for him a little bit here, locking up his tires in the mid corner and then upon exit, getting some oversteer as well, which is gonna slow him down, manages to catch it, but everybody's gonna go through or at least just about the, uh, those two cars go through. Joey, however, gets caught side by side, heading into the second chicane contact is made right around the first tire barrier. Joey maintains the outside all of the way through there, turns into the inside for this corner. Luis wanting to get through there and just pushing at Joey, giving him a little bit of damage on the bumper. And at this point, uh, the problem for Joey is that he's racking up quite a few incident points, risking a DQ, and we'll kind of keep you up to date with that a little bit later. Lap number five, the car in P5, locking up his tires through the long left-hander into the dirt. P6, seven, eight, and nine all coming through here. Joey looking to move up a position and he will get it done as after rejoining the previous holder of p5 just didn't have enough speed to combat everybody who's flying past him so joey now up into p7 one position away from his starting position would be quite a comeback at this point to make that happen for himself gaining a ton of time on the guy ahead through that chicane putting himself right onto his tail he has a good run, definitely carried more speed through there. Could look to absolutely ship something, wouldn't be very smart. He's not going to do it and uh, decides to instead just follow him through, try and put some pressure on to car number 11, potentially get a better run at some point. He does have the slipstream as well. And I mean, it's a bit of a straight here. He's got the slipstream, long right-hander at the end of this little straight could look to make it happen he's going to move to the inside and stay there car number 11 not willing to try and defend that all of the way through opens up space joey finds himself just about bumper to bumper with this guy switching to the outside for the final corner breaking later getting side by side and there's got to be space allowed by car number 11 difficult corner to go through too wide but they do it joey has the outside now for turn one as they cross onto lap number six fighting for p6 to get that starting position back slightly ahead going into the first corner and he's going to hold it all of the way around the outside makes use of all of the runoff 11 eventually backs out and uh seeds to joey however joey is immediately gonna drive off into the dirt and i didn't understand what happened here so i actually called him and tried to get some insight as to what happened <laughs> i just wanted to hit the code <laughs> where did that damage come from I hope you guys enjoyed the words of Joey and his infinite wisdom rejoining the track now. I think he's in P9 or, or actually P10. Uh, car number 13 ahead of him, who I think is one of the cars who got into an accident earlier. 
which is a little bit concerning for Joey because Joey at this point is two incident points away from being disqualified. He has his windshield wiper on as well to try and wipe away some of those incidents. Not quite going to work for him. Looking up the inside like to replicate that move he did on the last lap, but he's got to be careful. He will get disqualified if he loses uh, or if he makes contact. And as car number three, I mean, he just doesn't seem to care actually he's going up the inside of the final corner i don't know if that was an off track but he manages to get his car side by side he has the inside for turn one and he is just going to drive into this guy instead and get disqualified okay <laughs> oh god uh i don't even i don't even i was so mad at this guy in the moment because i swear i thought he was like creeping on me but then i looked back and i i so car number 13 was able to continue the race and look at this that was car number 24 that guy from the beginning he's up into like p10 or something at this point i don't really know here is the final lap and yeah i'm kind of on an island i wasn't able to keep up with the guy that i let through eventually falling back by three seconds and uh, we would end up crossing the line three seconds either direction in p3 so lots of threes going on 10 laps down absolutely love this track had a ton of fun in these couple of races and week 13 honestly in general has just been a blast here are the results p3 baby two of them back to back uh victor really fast driver ahead of me and the guy ahead of him i mean look at their times i was truly not in their league at this point gaining both i rating and safety rating in the green i put i suppose i could have defended that guy but i uh, just yeah i kind of regret that here is joey's grave rest in peace joey and if you guys enjoyed this video and want to support me please check out my channel and some of my other videos there and i bet you'll enjoy those as well